Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please feel free to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and I really appreciate it. Uh, right now I have the car, my 79 track car, up on the lift as it, where it spends most of its life really. Uh, but I've got, got it up on the bridge jack and I'm going through the front suspension and I thought it would be a great opportunity to kind of show you what this car has to offer and walk you through the SLA or often referred to as double wishbone style front suspension that my buddies and I have designed for this car a while ago. Uh, caveat, we did take a design, an older design, modify it, uh, kind of mix and match a few things. And I'll be talking to that here later on in the video as well. But in order to get the best viewing of everything, I figured I might as well uh, take the brake caliper and rotor off. And that way you can kind of see everything, walk you through a couple of the details and hopefully give you any ideas uh, if you were interested in building one of your own or if you just wanted to appreciate the engineering. So without further ado, here we go. Now that I got the rotor off uh, as well as the caliper, I just kind of want to take a moment and bring you in a little bit closer and show you what I've got going on here uh, with the front end of the car. All right, so we have a standard, and the way it was designed was a standard uh, 1995 or SN95 platform hub and wheels. It got some nice Timken bearings in here. And this is uh, the way this was designed was to use the factory spindle as well and so the whole premise behind that was to eliminate as much cost on the consumer as they possibly can uh, and make it work so the original guys who put this together uh, the svd motorsports ended up making a bracket that bolts onto where normally your strut would bolt onto in the upper spindle and then used a chrysler upper ball joint for their design now what you see here, the control arms are the design of my good friends. And they put this together and then produced them. And they are, this is where it really differs from the original design. What we have going on here is basically a clevis that goes back into an aluminum one inch bar. We use rod ends on either side and we have left and right hand threads on both of these, basically giving you a ton of flexibility and adjustment for the upper control arm. So really finite adjustments to your caster and your camber and everything else. The upper control arm is bolted uh, to tabs that are part of the K-member itself. And then the shock is bolted to an upper shock mount here, which goes through the frame and then kind of just has a bolt up top for securing. Now, what I'm running into in this particular setup, which will be a different video, is that when I am compressed on static, I have almost no travel left before I'm on the bump stop. So what I'm planning on doing is actually using a, a luminous spacers. I'm gonna raise this up an inch and then use this hole that we made here. Uh, but again, I'll talk about that in a different video down the road. Our design, when we went back to the drawing board uh, for the upper shock mount and the lower control arm, is that we decided to use some conical spacers uh, between the tabs and the shock to make it really easy to get on and off. Uh, this particular set, it doesn't have that. It's a slightly older adjustment, but not a big deal. The lower control arm uses the factory style ball joint. And then I just have the uh, caliper sitting on the lower rod right now, uh, but we made some the lower control rods to be adjustable as well with the left and right hand threads here to help provide as much flexibility and adjustment as you possibly can and then allow it to pivot there. So the design uh, was, was pretty stout all around and we just really focused on creating the adjustment in the control arms and that's where we stand and then you can just ignore this uh, this bracket uh works completely functional uh, we just made it go where the uh i believe that's where your speed sensor would normally go in for uh your abs but uh anyway down below let me get down here
ignore these tabs. These are going to get cut off and welded, but these were originally some designs for um, a splitter, which will, again, be in another video. But you'll see the K-member is a stout K-member. It's square tubing. And what we ended up doing for engine brackets is going directly to the block uh, with a modular design. This also goes down to the back part of your rack and pinion. So it bolts in back here. And it, uh, it makes it easy to swap out different engines, but I really, uh, we, we focus on a different design on our particular platform, which we haven't really gotten around yet to, uh, to getting done, but we'll make it there eventually. Uh, clearly I have an oil leak that I need to address down here. Um, but the same thing goes through their side. It uses a factory style uh, front sway bar for the Fox. And so you're limited to the aftermarket options currently. And we plan on doing something different down the road with that as well. But here is where we are currently at with our SLA suspension. And so I hope that you guys uh, can take something back from it and uh, go from there. So I wanted to take this time while I had this beautiful backdrop behind me uh, of my neighbor's 93 Cobra to talk a little bit about the history of our SLA design and where it came from and how it all got started. So back in the 90s, there was a man by the name of Bill Mitchell uh, who did, came up with and designed SVD Motorsports. And it's not the Bill Mitchell that you may be familiar with from General Motors and had a long time standing with Chevrolet and everybody else, a uh, different Bill Mitchell. Uh, but also heavily involved with racing and motorsports at the time. He was getting into World Challenge Series, which went by Pirelli World Challenge a couple years ago, and now it's the SRO Motorsport World Challenge, or whatever the name may be. Uh, but was racing there, raced with Bruce Griggs, raced with a lot of these other guys that were big, relevant, upcoming uh, during that era in the road racing American Muscle Series. They quickly discovered and found out that if they wanted to be competitive, they're going to have to do something different with their front end. They designed their SLA uh, all of, through CAD uh, at the time, which was a big deal for them, and they found some relative success with the program. Their concept was pretty generic. The upper control arms, as you saw in the video, was mounted to the K member. They used the Coney shock uh, that I have highlighted. Before it was like an 8216. Uh, it was actually a drag shock and they revalved it. And they found a formula that worked pretty well for them. They ended up winning two races, I believe is what it came out to. And after that, they decided that they were going to attempt to put it into production. They produced several kits. There are several of them still floating around there. Occasionally you'll see one pop up on you know Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or anywhere else. They made it into like fast muscle Mustangs and fast Fords uh, article, and they had everything talked about in there. And they sold, I think he told me he only sold a couple dozen kits, if that. But it just never got off the ground, whether due to their business model or production or costs or whatever the case may be. Fast forward to 2015, uh, I was deployed and I was on the internet and I know that I kind of wanted to take the next step because I have a habit of tinkering with my car more than I do driving it and that's where I find my enjoyment. And I, I wanted to move into something like an SLA front suspension so I started looking out online and seeing what was available. I came across an eBay, uh, eBay ad that was selling the IRS for $3,000 and the $3,000 had the front end IRS and had all of the drawings, diagrams, and all of the parts and pieces that have already been cut out and laser cut to make several more SLA front ends. Uh, we basically had enough bins full of metal scrap to come back and produce, you know, 15 of those. But the problem was is that we never got the actual designs to put those back together. And instead, we got a prototype K member, prototype control arms, mock setups for the rear end, 
uh, and it was very very difficult to try to piece it together almost not near impossible but it, it was a lot of a lot of time that was going to go into it we grabbed that took it all back and we reverse engineered that SLA we brought it up into SolidWorks uh, we took the measurements uh, we figured out what we wanted to change and what we wanted to do the original kit had a very modular design to it for different engines uh, basically swap out the, the where the it motor mounts would bolt onto the K member. Swap that component out, put a new one in, and you can make pretty much anything work. They had it for small block Chevys, uh, for the modular engines, and also had different brackets and spacers depending on what year Mustang you were looking at. We had a design that should be hopefully posting up in the video right now uh, that was going to solve all of those problems and make a singular product that was going to kind of fix all the stuff that we saw and make it really easier for the end user to have an uh, infinite amount of adjustment into their control arms. It's not dead uh, by any means, but we haven't really got off the ground. Life happens. Uh, you have kids and you have twins and then your business partner have kids and you move and just everything kind of changes and slows down. Uh, we still have those designs and maybe one day we'll still uh, do something with them. But in the meantime, this is kind of where we're at. And the one that you see on the car right now was actually that prototype K member that they gave us with our own design control arms. And it's a pretty cool setup. And it really is fun and awesome to say, you know, we had a hand and help design, develop, build, race that that is on our car. And we are looking at doing something else on the road uh, with it. Another cool piece that we happened to pick up in that purchase was the rear end for this car. They had designed a four link rear end with a panhard bar that was that basically took care of the upper control arm binding that you're familiar with in a four link Fox. It was actually a pretty cool design nothing phenomenal but it worked pretty well for them and it was something that we were also looking at marketing and essentially what it did is take the two control arms at the angle and it had them using spacers and some modifications to the mounting points make them parallel with the lower bars and obviously that doesn't stop your rear end from going back and forth so you adopt the pan hard bar onto the car and then you're set and so a lot of people go to a torque arm or a lot of people go to, you know, I've seen some people do the five link Steeda rear end. This one is pretty cool because the upper control arms were parallel. It didn't have the binding. It stopped the rotation of the rear axle on XL and D cell lighter than a torque arm uh, and pretty efficient for what it was. And that was the same system that they ran with their uh, couple race winning cars as well. All in all, really cool design. Uh, if you are interested in something like that or are picking our brains, you know, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Probably not gonna share any designs yet because like I said, I'm not sure, we're not sure what we're gonna do moving forward. Uh, I kinda wanna hold on to some of that stuff, but maybe it'll give you an idea that you can use down the road and go from there. Thank you.